45 seconds of logos. However, it's obvious the movie is going to be so tedious, I almost wish there were more logos. Ubisoft, now making video games and shitty movies. Not only reading, but scrolling reading. Also, Four Centuries is not only how bad video game movies begin, it's a warning about the length of bad video game movies. Freeze it right there. Knights Templar, Apple of Eden, a key to free will itself. This is a rejected National Treasure 2 concept. You thought you could fool me, movie, but I'm too slick for you. Also, nothing in the Bible explicitly states the forbidden fruit is an apple. Should they double back and keep an eye out for suspicious figs? We take you now to an unpronounceable city in Spain, the exact year Columbus left for the Americas, which doesn't seem important enough a connection to mention, but I assure you this bat movie thinks it is. Ten seconds of super blurry weapons manufacturing, since movie adheres to the something's wrong with my contact lens style of filmmaking. Si la manzana cae en manos de los templarios. Then he will accept his position as the scene asshole. You know, the elaborate rolling pin of backstoryness is just a little too Da Vinci Code for my liking. La manzana lo es todo. Apple fans, annoyingly loyal since 1492. Nada es verdad. But the statement nothing is true can't be true, right? Because then something would be true, which would make the statement nothing is true untrue. Somos asesinos. Somewhere, somehow, someone convinced the studio brass that this was a badass f***ing opening. They were wrong, of course, which only makes their achievement more impressive. No seriously, movie about futuristic assassins sent back in time chooses to open on a couple minutes of a bird flying over mountains. Is there a reason? You don't know! <laughs> Dumbass. Not only does this kid survive this, but somehow after that crash, he ended up with three identically sized scrapes on his face at 1.75 inch intervals. How did some handlebars do this kind of precision damage? How much does a video game based movie need to rely on James Wan's horror staples? Apparently a lot. Not to be overly macabre, not that I really care about that though, but still. How likely is it for her hand to enter rigor mortis in a position such that the incriminating necklace is not only visible but basically gift wrapped? <laughs> the subtitle here says man speaking Spanish backwards, and I think that's actually way more revealing for deaf or half deaf people like me than it is for the normal hearing audience. All they hear is gibberish, but I, as a hearing impaired viewer using the subtitles, know that he is actually speaking Spanish backwards. Backwards, suggesting he's a demon of Central American origin, or something. They found us. Kyle's dad plays the pronoun game instead of explaining to his son why he just killed his mother. Perfect illustration of the tailgating black villain SUV's cliche. This prison shelf seems the perfect height for finger painting and not much else. You're here to save my soul. We're almost 10 minutes into this picture and I've only heard around 20 English words. Who is this guy? Why is he in prison? Do we know? Do we care? Do we know? Oh Lord, wash away my sin. Movie is trolling me for sure, by having this line of dialogue spoken over a clear, centered prison wall doodle of a hand jerking off a dick-like object. Cal's life flashing before his eyes consists of a third-person memory of his mother, some stock footage of clouds, and one of the visualizers from Windows Media Player. Also, pretty sure this movie is suggesting that in between life and death, this guy was given a chance to be a time-traveling assassin, and he said yes. And that may be one of the weirdest sentences I've ever uttered. Face touching? Denied! There are no hospital safeguards in place to keep this from happening. Let him go. Yes, because he has an important lesson to learn here about his non-working legs that is better learned through experience than lecture. Also, I just like watching people with no leg function try to outrun able-bodied people because I am a jerk. I understand that Sophia told the other two guys to let him go, but no one else in the building heard that, so why isn't anyone else trying to stop him? Camera sweeps, music swells, and I still have no f***ing clue what I'm looking at here. I had this. Your father wants him in. He's my patient. This is my program. Oh great, suddenly I'm asked to shift my empathy from Fassbender to Sophia without so much as a have an apple. It belongs to Aguilar. We're covered in his burial site. If he's just accessing his ancestors' memories, then why does he need to wear the actual blades? Why not the whole outfit? And if he has to be connected to something that his ancestor once wore for some reason, why pick the most dangerous thing in his ensemble, forcibly put it on him, and not tell him how it works? Andalusia, 1492. Record everything. Okay, you might expect me to send the time travel, or the lack of any information about what's going on, but I'm actually here to send the record everything. Are there missions to the past where you people don't record everything? And if so, why? Also, look, Jeremy Irons is here, slumming his ass off. What is this? I'm sorry, Kyle, this is not the way I like to do things. How do you usually like to do things? With a prior discussion and a mutual understanding of the events that are about to take place? Me too! Insert epidural. <laughs> the irony here is that ultimately epidurals are used to stop pain. What do you want from me? Your past. I don't mean to split hairs here. Actually, I do. But she doesn't really want your past. She wants your great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather's past. First memory match locked. I mean, is this movie so vague because they expect viewers to know the game? Or because they realize no one but game players would come to see this thing? Or both? Stay with it, Carl. Stay with what? He has no idea what's happened. Oh, who the f wrote this script? Attempt synchronization. 
Synchronization achieved. So are they synchronizing his mind to his ancestor's mind in the past? Or are all of Aguilar's memories passed down genetically? And they just found them inside Cal's brain? I'm pretty sure the games have explanations for these questions, but movie don't got time for that. Also, if these are just Aguilar's memories, what if he doesn't remember something? Do we just skip it? Or what if he remembers something incorrectly? Or what if he just remembers mundane shit, like middle-aged donkey races or something? Say, how can we maximize our CG budget? I know, make it so that there's so much fire the smoke covers everything, and then we can fudge the details. Brilliant! Aguilar apparently remembers being behind an eagle and swooping down over an epic battle. Also, is this an attack bird? Or just a regular bird flying too close to a battle? Or is the bird the DP of the movie? Does it actually take this long for Cal to zap into the past? Or is this just some weird bird-based self-indulgent bullshit? Nuestra misión es el chico. Explaining the mission while you're in position and moments from starting said mission. Mad Max Horsey Road. I want them to cut back to Cal when he's doing normal things, like riding a horse. What does that look like? Is he riding in circles? Is he riding in place? This bad guy literally abandons the reins of his coach to go back and fight Cal Aguilar. And what do you know, the horses keep running, and the carriage stays on the path. And it even overtakes the coach he was chasing. Oh, now all of a sudden it's going to be an issue if one of these carriages has no driver. Of course. You did well, Cal. What? You yourself said he couldn't change anything. You can't change what happens, Cal. He was watching some dead dude's memory. So, yeah, good job looking, Cal. Also, movie is almost one third over and you haven't explained a goddamn thing. Alan watches the speech he gave to the UN because it's convenient to the plot. And the artifact? The apple. This screenplay is 12% made up of the word apple. I have to report to the elders. The elders? This movie is intentionally f***ing with you at this point. Who are the elders? Not only f*** you for asking, but it probably doesn't matter. People no longer care about their civil liberties. They care about their standard of life. Citation needed. All the bloodlines have died out. Bar one. Did Alan forget about the other assassin dudes he has living in his complex? Jesus, color junkie cinematographer. I mean, there are 37 different shades of gray in this shot alone. It's not a prison, Carl. You'll learn more if you cooperate. And he'll cooperate more if you say shit that's 10% clearer than this vagary. This isn't the first time Fassbender has been in a movie where a man in a black turtleneck is on a seemingly endless quest to find a magical apple. You killed a man. Pimp. Well, yeah, I guess you're right. All pimps definitely deserve to die. Also, can we get any f***ing backstory on Cal that doesn't involve his lineage? I mean, he was sentenced to death for killing a pimp, and the Templars faked that death and found a way to get him out of there. That's a much more interesting movie than this. It's the apple of Eden, Cal. I believe it exists. The Bible tells us it contained the seed of man's first disobedience. Um, no. I have read Genesis about six dozen times in my life, and it does not mention anything about a metal round object housing the seeds of Adam and Eve's sinful decisions. Movie should read the Bible more. You'd think with a building this size, they'd be able to keep the basketball court and the cafeteria separate from each other. What the f*** is going on? You said it, Fassbender. You said it. Since this is the fourth or fifth time Cal hallucinates Aguilar, followed by zero plot advancement, I can only assume the director keeps showing it to us until he can think of what happens next. Actually, wait. Are we supposed to be pitching ideas? I'm crazy. Crazy for feeling so lonely. Or just for taking this role in this movie, maybe. Didn't you call Jake Gyllenhaal or Taylor Kish for advice before accepting this? The f***ing smoke in this movie. I mean, it's like late 15th century Europe was constantly on fire or some shit. Just pony up for the good CGI, you losers. Hi, Game of Thrones imagery. I figured you'd make an appearance somewhere during this rip-off palooza. As these two get led to their execution, I am 100% confident that either Will and Elizabeth Turner or Jackie Chan's girlfriend from Shanghai Noon will rescue them at the last minute. Man, Kristen Stewart really wants to show her hard side. Well, that's not Kristen Stewart. Well, my penis sure thinks it is. Wait. Can we cut that last part? Bird person here might want to back the fuck up. His ensemble belongs nowhere near a fire. Aren't we glad that asshole intimidatingly stuck the knife here? If not, he would have been burned at the stake, they'd never need to find Cal, and this movie wouldn't exist. He's synchronizing. I would also be in awe of this if I knew what it meant. I don't, so I'm not. Also, what are we even doing here as a movie? He's remembering this. They're seeing him remember this. But everything is decided already, hundreds of years ago. There is zero suspense. And even then, negative suspense when you factor in that I don't know who to root for here, given how little information I've been shown about Aguilar and his foe. Just for fun, let's count the cuts in this very short fight sequence. Eleven. Eleven cuts in 25 seconds. I know someone is super proud of this work, but that someone is bad and should feel bad. Shoot action so you don't have to cut it to shreds, goddammit! This shit here is so born means Doctor Strange it should have credited Matt Damon or Benedict Cumberbatch somewhere in here. Cut! 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 cut. You know what? I'm just gonna add ten more bulk sins for all the overcut action and that f***ing smoke. And we won't mention either ever again, okay? Top of this building has horse access. This movie is 12% apple, 14% bird. So Aguilar jumps from a pant shitting height, and instead of seeing how he actually survives, movie just cuts back to Cal and hopes I won't be pissed off about it. Well, I'm gonna die in here, aren't I? But if you go in there, if you own free will, 
Well, is he going in of his own free will if he knows that being forced to go in will kill him? Assassins and Templars have been at war for centuries. Wow, just like the werewolves and vampires. Is there anything I can do? How about you let me out of here? Wait, I thought... You're not a prisoner here, Cal. So what's changed? Why does he have to ask to leave now? I had to negotiate. You mean manipulate? How is this manipulation? He's wanted to kill his father the whole time. All Alan has done is set him up to do just that. If anyone here has been manipulated, it's me. I'm the one who gave 20th Century Fox money for basically nothing in return. The apple contains the genetic code for free will. F***ing what? Also, if free will is genetically coded, then that would mean a series of proteins, which are physical things, create free will. Also, also, Brendan Gleeson was like, F***ing Jeremy Irons told me I should take this role without explaining how embarrassed I'd be after. So when I read the script, I quit. But then the studio backed a truck full of money and body oil up to my door, and well, here I am. I don't want to jinx anything, but we haven't seen that damn bird in a... Sh how they don't completely shatter that f***ing apple during this fight is beyond me. Let's all keep in mind, he was just stabbed in the side. Kudos to this movie for even thinking about the surface tension of the water, but also f*** you movie for suggesting a tiny-ass knife would have any impact on whether Aguilar survives this. Be buffet. Movie rips off Indiana Jones and Steve Martin. It's Christopher Columbus. Well, there's something I didn't see coming that in no way adds to the movie's intrigue or entertainment value. Also, let's not forget, Columbus was a legit evil person, even if Hollywood keeps giving him the savior treatment. His remains were returned to Spain. Scanny McTriangulate feels the need to continue using his supercomputer map for something that can be Googled. Found it. Even though she's right, this is a little presumptuous until she, you know, actually finds it. While all the action continues around them, Sophia, Cal, and assorted assassin ghosts are just standing around the Animus chamber, like they're waiting for the screenwriter to tell them what to do next. You're not alone, Cal. Your father and I are here to help you in your face-off with Voldemort. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Wish I'd learned that before turning out to be an honest good person, like some kind of sucker. We fight. So because his ghost mom, presumably named Martha, showed up, suddenly he flips sides and Omar and the others just welcome him with open arms? You're not prepared for how much of this movie's second half is basically a glorified prison riot. Well, the glory will go to your father, but we both know who found it. Cal and Aguilar? I think they're trying to imply that Sophia found it, but Cal's memory searching and leap of faith did most of the heavy lifting. Purged of the Assassin's Creed. God damn it, roll credits already. I want to feel threatened by this apple, but I don't have the slightest idea what it's doing. Is it releasing something into the Earth's atmosphere that's going to kill all the free will proteins in our DNA? Thankfully for the assassins, this climax is taking place in a Templar building, where most everyone is already wearing a hooded cloak, allowing them to blend in. Cal is able to slow-mo walk up to the CEO of Abstergo and slit his throat while giving a speech without anyone trying to stop him. Okay, so she found her dead dad, said lynchy leave for me, walked outside, and we pan up over the city here, and holy sh**, this movie is ending! They thought they were going to get a sequel for sure! <laughs> It is not to ourselves, but to the future that we must give glory. A fortune cookie must have fallen into Charlotte Rampling's script when she was memorizing her lines. British hooded Batman! Fifteen minutes of credits! He was a demigod of the wind and sea. Mr. Delcroix. I don't want to leave this world but I hate my heart. Or I ask your forgiveness for what I've done. Tarath, the rock, 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 Tarath, the rock. If I hear so much as a mouse fart in here the rest of the night, I swear by God and Sonny Jesus, you will all visit the infirmary. They call me Musa. But my name is Baptiste. But the game is out there. And it's either play or get played. Final ferry battle bar, final ferry battle bar, final ferry battle bar, final ferry. There's nothing wrong with the microphone. We happy? Vincent! We happy? Yeah, we happy. This Assassin's Creed movie could easily have been titled Apple Search, or Apple Creed, or Assassin's Apple. Point is, the movie talks about apples a lot. Do you like apples? And while apples are a healthy snack, they are notorious for tasting like apples. And not delivering to your door. I mean, when was the last time you heard from the Apple Man? You are trespassing on Wickles Manor! Look, I know you want a snack. I do too. 
It's one of our defining human characteristics. Lay off me, I'm starving! And if you want to snack and stay healthy, then Nature Box is the lost city of Atlantis you've been looking for. Tons of tasty snacks that are free of additives and preservatives. Stuff is tasty and good for you. I can't believe it. Go to naturebox.com slash cinemasins today and you'll get three snacks free on your first order. That's amazing! And when you go to naturebox.com slash cinemasins, you'll see our personal favorites. Snacks handpicked by the Cinemasins gang. You can even order an entire box full of just our favorites. You like me right now! You like me! So what are you waiting for? Do you hate snacks? I love lamp. I love lamp. No, of course you don't. So head to naturebox.com slash cinemasins today to get started snacking healthy. Let's go, people! Vominos!